Tennessee Homestead, how are you today? Me, I'm doing real good. After the Monday I had, I... <laughs> yeah. Kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, something kind of popped up on my radar here a while back, and I've been looking at it. Uh, and I got to tell you, American dairy farmers are in a lot of trouble right now. Now, some of it's being inflicted upon them. Uh, some of their problems. Uh, a few of them, uh, they were kind of self-inflicted ones. Let me explain what I'm talking about here. Back, uh, a while back, when milk prices was to the dairies was uh, quite a bit higher. And because of the stupid pricing system that the federal government's got on milk, you know, they want to control the market. Uh, and there's a big reason for this, and a lot of folks don't think about this. Your uh, inflation rates are based upon certain food items also when they calculate out, you know, how much food uh, has increased. And milk happens to be one of the biggies. <laughs> yeah. So the government has a uh, good cause to hold prices at certain levels because it holds down the inflation rate. Well, just like uh, for some reason they think the cost of living should include things like cell phones, computers, and televisions. Last time I checked, none of those above items was necessary to survive. You know, it's not like housing, heat, electric, things of that nature. I mean, it should be way down on the list. But what it does is it lowers, kind of takes the curve and pulls this stuff with it for the items that you do have to have, like housing, electric, you know, things like that. And it pulls that inflation rate down. So they can say, see, look, inflation's nothing. Okay. Where if they actually took and went down the things you need to survive in life, you know, shelter, all the foods and uh, utilities, things of this nature, the stuff that we pay all the time, okay? Uh, the inflation rate would be considerably different than what the government's telling you, okay? Which would trigger them to have to do things to fix it. <sighs> like quit printing money. There'd be one. Um, so, understand it, and uh, I'd heard a statement made, and I thought, wow, one of the guys from uh, the government that handles this pricing structure, it is such a ridiculous formula and all the stuff that goes into calculating out what that farmer gets for a pound of milk. Okay, yes, they sell it in pounds, not in gallons. For a pound of milk, um, <laughs> the guy actually testified before Congress and says, you know, really, in the United States, only three people know uh, how to calculate out that price, and two of them are liars. <laughs> so, yeah. Phew. You know, so to that end, I understand where their hands are tied. You know, all they can do is milk cows and put it on the truck, you know, kind of thing. Uh, a lot of dairies that are surviving had went through the trouble to say, okay, we need to expand out this market, okay? Instead of pouring milk in a drain when the truck won't take it, we need to get cheese and, you know, different product lines started. Uh, a few dairies that do that are surviving, okay? They're doing okay. Uh, so... What ended up happening was when milk prices was up to the farmer, the way for them to make more money was to dramatically increase the size of their herds. A lot of them doubled in herd sizes. 
story after story of them going from 600 head they were milking to 1200 head, and, you know, things of this nature. Okay, uh, that worked fine when milk prices were up, now that they're back down again. Okay, now these guys have big problems. Okay, because it doesn't matter. You got to milk those cows, period, you know, whether you need the milk or not. And they're ending up discarding a lot of milk and things of this nature, and their checks are down low because the prices are down low, and yada, yada, yada. So a little bit of it's self-inflicted. A lot of it's inflicted by the, by the government, to be honest with you, with their ridiculous pricing structure. Canada's got a similar pricing structure, but they kind of tilted the scales toward their, um, toward their producers, and has made it tough for our producers to import milk into Canada. So, you know, there you have it. That was a big squabble that Trump was having with them. Yeah, but Canada's not going to change that because they don't want to lose their dairy farmers. All right? Yeah. Uh, and that's what's happening to us. To the tune of this year, you know, there's probably been six to 10,000 Dairy farmers go down. Okay. Now you've got Walmart and Kroger out there who are setting up their own processing and these uh, smaller dairy operations, Dean Dairy and stuff like this, uh, are having to cut off dairy uh, farmers. Tell them we don't need your milk, don't have a market for it. Okay. Big milk glut in the U.S. No market for it. And now it's all beginning to circle around. Uh, like I said, Walmart and Kroger decided uh, they can build a production plant of their own close to their main distribution center and move on and just cut it out altogether. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so the quotas that these smaller dairy operations had were each farm could put in so many gallons, um, it's going to be a case of whatever dairy can produce their milk at the cheapest price is who's going to get the business. And there are ways to do it. Uh, the sad part is that the American dairy farmer doesn't have the where for all for a lot of it. Uh, they have got automated systems where the cow walks into the stanchion anytime she feels like she needs to be milked. A robot arm comes out, cleans her teats, puts on the suction, turns on the machine, milks her dry, takes them back off, she walks off the stanchion. Primarily automated, okay? They're making money, okay? And what we're having now is a consolidation of the dairy industry. Um, don't see a lot on the horizon to stop it. I, I really don't. Because uh, there's no way for these guys with the price controls in place to be competitive. And, you know, Lord knows we got to have cheap milk, you know, for all assorted reasons. So there you have it. Dairy is in big trouble in the United States. And uh, you, you wish you could point to this state over here has it or that state over there has it, but what it boiled down to, I mean, you got. Minnesota, Wisconsin, of course, they're big dairy uh, areas. Uh, nope. They're, they're closing up dairies hand over fist. New York State, another one, closing dairies hand over fist. Now Kentucky, uh, a lot of their dairies are going down. <sighs> yeah. Doesn't look good, folks. It really doesn't. And I wasn't a dairy guy, so I can't tell you about the Overall day-to-day -day operation, I know those cows have to be milked two or three times a day, but short of that, you know, uh, I don't know that much about their industry other than what I'm reading. And what I'm reading is, is it's like the, uh, the farmer is the one caught in the vice. He's getting it from all kinds of directions, doing the best he can to try to make some money out of the thing. He increased herds, now he's selling off. Uh, you know, it's, we got a lot of dairy cattle going to slaughter, man, right now. 
So it's not a good thing. Uh, Walmart and Kroger added to it with their, we want to make another, you know, a few bucks. Whew. You know, another reason not to go to them and to buy their products. Seriously. Uh, Walmart lost me a long time ago uh, because their business uh, techniques of wanting to take American companies. You know, Sam Walton, he built the business off of encouraging uh, American companies, even helping them financially to get their production levels up to meet the store's demands and so forth. This new corporate operation, since that man's passed away, he used to be a family-friendly store. Um, they had policies in place that uh, a mom could come there and work, but you know if she needed to be out the door by you know two thirty, three o'clock to get her kids from school, she could get out of there by two thirty, three o'clock. Uh, today, uh, from people I know in management of Walmart stores, will tell you very simply. One, if they have, lay them out a schedule like that, uh, they'll try to work with them a little bit, but we'll let them know that if we have you scheduled to four or five, you have to be here. Otherwise, we're going to cut you loose. Doesn't sound very family friendly anymore. But that's what's going on in the dairy industry. And if we don't get it fixed, uh, all we're going to go to is here again, the mega industrial farming techniques. And, uh, you know, when we lose the small American farmers, be it in dairy, in the fields, whatever, um, we're going to suddenly become uh, at the will and the, and the control of corporations because that's who's getting, stepping in. We need to wake up, folks. We really do. Uh, we need to start buying local, okay? Um, you know, maybe some of these smaller dairies can, uh, can get in there and start uh, putting together their own pasteurization uh, systems, or uh, they do a lot of this in Tennessee where they uh, sell cow shares to where you can get fresh whole milk. And if you ever had fresh whole milk, <laughs> You don't buy that stuff in plastic containers, man. That tastes like white water. You know, there's no... And, and nutritionally, they got to add vitamins to it because they've done boiled out anything worth having in the milk. So, and with the big craze of the almond milks and all this, you know, to be trendy, you got to drink almond milk. You know, for the sakes. After all, those cows are big polluters of the atmosphere. And sad to say, in a lot of the dairy... Uh, scenarios the way they're raising them yeah yeah they do because they're being fed massive amounts of grain uh, which is putting out a massive amount of methane but there's a lot of small dairy operators that are also feeling the pinch I know one fellow he runs Jersey cattle and they are in the fields folks they just come into the milking barn a couple of times a day other than that they're standing out there knee-deep in grass and grazing and they got a pretty good life very uh, environmental you know it's environmentally friendly you don't think these corporations are going to do that they, they won't be leaving the milking barn <laughs> you know so something to think about um, you know farming as we know it's changing and if we don't change our buying habits and start insisting that uh, this not happen. You know, the family farm is going to disappear. You know, uh, regenerative agriculture can help a lot uh, to where the farmer can make more money because they're not spending it on inputs. But it's also going to take us, us Americans, to get in there and say, you know what? We don't want to buy from your store anymore because you're screwing over the American working man. And we're just not going to put up with it. That's a way to stop this stuff. And, it'll, you know, look at this crisis and stuff. Everybody talking about how the Walmart shelves are bare and all this. And like I said in that uh, video uh, that went up uh, Tuesday, our stores are stocked. And small rural stores are stocked. 
Not a big problem. Oh, sure, they might have somebody doing some canning and stuff of this nature, and they might get a low on produce here or a little of this, it's, but it's a matter of a day or two they got it back in. <sighs> yeah, like I said, I was I was out in the stores the other day over the weekend, and yeah, they, they had plenty of food, you know, even toilet paper. You guys in the city, just stay in the city. Don't come out here for toilet paper. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's kind of sad, uh, but uh, take some time. Go out there and do a little research on a dairy farmer. And uh, like I said, some of it's a self-inflicted wound of where they were trying to earn more money. Uh, and that caused even a bigger milk glut, which led to even larger problems. But, uh, you know, it is turning into the, the, the Large corporations are going to be running your agriculture if we don't start tapping the brakes here and start looking out for the needs of the farmer. <sighs> if it doesn't happen, let me tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you again. I have read white papers from these corporations and stuff where if they ever get control of your food, the commodities market's going to disappear. You do know that. It's going to go. Why? Because they're not going to set prices based on the commodities markets anymore. They're going to say, I don't care if you own, say, corn's worth $3 a bushel. We have all the corn, and we want 10. That's where they're headed with this. Be advised. And you and I are going to pay the 10, or we don't have any corn. What do you think of that? Or many other food sources. Shop local. Uh, like that store I was telling you about. They buy a lot of their produce locally. Alright. Yeah. From local farmers. Good organic food on their shelves. Eggs. Different things of this. These small little hometown uh, grocery stores still buy local and have fresh eggs and milk and all that. Folks, you need to get back to buying local. Find your farmers. You don't want the corporations in charge of your food because they don't care if you eat. They really don't. Somebody else will buy it. Or they'll wait for the next virus to come along and, you know, sell it to them. When they're all hoarding up food. Anyway, something to think about, something to look at. It's pretty sad we're losing a lot of dairies. This year we have lost a lot of dairy farmers. Better wake up, folks. We need to find a way to start fixing this. And uh, for dairy farmers and, and all the farmers, uh, the regenerative agriculture seems to have be a bright horizon for a lot of them if they want to use their heads for something other than a hat rack. But, uh, yeah, uh, once corporations take over our agriculture, we're all in trouble, okay? And uh, I don't think the government would be using food so much as their, their indicators for inflation because them boys get a hold of control of it. You're going to see this stuff go through the roof, just through the roof. They've been planning this for years. And uh, that's what they're going to do. So keep keep your eyes open. Go out and do yourself a little study. You know, find out what's going on. And start making corrections. This is Rich from Tennessee Homestead. I love you guys and appreciate you, but you need to pay attention to this stuff because your future and your children's future really are dependent on how you start handling this. Now is the time that folks need to start looking at what do I need to do to send my dollars to the small family farm and start doing it. Yeah, it means you're going to have to go to, go to the farmer's market. It means you're going to have to go out to their little farm stores. <sighs> going to mean extra effort on your part instead of going to your big box store and just walking through the aisle real fast. I know you're so busy. But the next time you go to the store and you pick up a 
pound of beef. Think to yourself, what's it going to be like and how well am I going to feed my family if this stuff goes to 25 bucks a pound and you're holding a package of hamburger? Okay? It can happen to you. Now that box of noodles is 10 bucks instead of two. It can happen to you. Wake up. You really need to pay attention to this. Alrighty, that's all I have to say on the issue. Go out there and do some of your own research. It'll make you start thinking. This is Rich Tennessee Homestead. Love and appreciate you guys, and I hope you're having a great week. Talk to you real soon.